What's up YouTube? I'm Danielle and this is Kitchen Optimist. I'm a novice cook but expert eater taking on recipes that scare the salt out of me one teaspoon at a time. Today I'm giving it a go with ricotta gnocchi. We recently had it at our rehearsal dinner and it was amazing. Shout out to Adele's in Nashville. To quote my best friend, ah now I understand what all those cooking shows mean when they say it should be pillowy. So that's what we're gonna be going for here. I found the recipe on some extremely random site called recipesfromitaly.com. I can't speak to her credentials. I can speak to the fact that the recipe is extremely simple. The quantities are given in grams first, cups secondarily, which makes me think she actually is European. Even better if it's Italian. There is no sauce involved in this. I'm gonna be using the store-bought arrabbiata, but there's lots of options with how you can dress it. Let's get started. We're gonna start with grating 110 grams or one cup of Parmesan cheese. Oh, look who it is. Hi, buddy. Actually, I just remembered that the ricotta has to be dry or you have to drain it. So I think I should probably do that first. We'll come back to you. So yeah, this is pretty wet. I'm gonna start with more than a cup because I assume if I drain the water out that it'll reduce the amount. Here, buddy. Huh. This one is significantly less wet in that batch. We'll just do like a couple random sized tablespoons with it. And now we will let that sit while we grate the cheese. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the sound of my dog licking the ricotta container across the floor. Uh, he's done licking that, and now he is staring at me, waiting for it to rain Parmesan cheese on him. 110 grams. I really prefer not to grate any more of this than necessary. Why did it just switch? It had been at zero, and then it switched to two. Oh, that's only 28 grams, 30 grams. We got some grating to do here. This is very much not my favorite activity. 49 of 110. This looks like a lot more than a cup to me. Wow, I'm just not doing well today because I also need two cups of ricotta cheese. I don't know how I did that. 62. I didn't get pre-graded because I have read the additives that they put in to keep it from, I don't know, coagulating can mess up the melt, but I will tell you, not be mad right now if it was pre-graded. At 80, 84, still 90, 91, 92, 93. Oh yeah, we're at 103, 104, 107, 111, 112, 111. All right, 110, we're turning this off, so I can't bear for it to change on me again. This is also significantly more than a cup. All right, I guess we'll let this drain a little longer and measure out the flour. Hey Siri, how many grams is one cup of grated Parmesan cheese? Shit. Siri says it's 100. Hey Siri, how much is 300 grams of flour in cups? Siri says it's two and a half cups, not two and a quarter. This wouldn't really matter, except I don't have that much flour left. Fingers crossed, we're going for 500 grams of flour. Luck be a lady. I'm getting myself so confused. I don't need 500 grams of flour. I need 500 grams of ricotta. I only need 300 grams of flour. This is at 330, thank God. 300 on the nose. Let's weigh out our ricotta. We need to get to 500 grams. I'm gonna have to say it's dry enough. I don't know how long it really needs to sit there. Well, in an unexpected turn of events, I don't have enough ricotta. I'm at 444 and I need to get to 500. I don't see that happening with this amount. Okay, 500. It might be too wet, but it is what it is. 
Now we mash the ricotta until it's smooth. You like, might need a bigger bowl. Okay, I'm mashing it until smooth. Does this get smooth? I think that's as smooth as it's getting. The photo of hers looks extremely different. I don't think with all the draining in the world that I would get my ricotta to look like this. So it might be doomed right now. It is what it is. Now I'm putting the eggs in and mixing until I get a cream. I don't know if that's a cream, but it's fully combined. Parmesan and a pinch of salt. Add the flour a little at a time. I'm supposed to mix this until it is compact but soft, which feels like the measurement of somebody who knows what they're doing. It's fully combined. This is the best I can do to get to compact but soft. Dust it with flour and knead it for a couple minutes until it's a loaf. My ricotta is absolutely too wet. This hers doesn't look this sticky. Oh, this isn't getting better. All right, we don't have a choice. I mean, we have a choice. I just don't have a solution. Cut a piece off. And it's supposed to turn into a long length of dough that I can then cut into small pieces. This is not happening. Stretch it. I don't wanna do this whole batch because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a big old mess. But if I quit now, I won't be able to give any semblance of a real <laughs> review of the taste. I think what I'm gonna do, this in here, and if we come up with a viable solve, we'll revisit that ball of ricotta flop. I'm going to cut these pieces. She says to dust them with flour to keep them from sticking, but that ship has sailed. So we will not be doing that because right now it feels like throwing good flour after bad. These are supposed to be about an inch. About is the operative word right now. A well salted pot of water on the stove. When it boils, I will drop these in or I will gently caressingly insert them into the boiling water. And when they rise to the top, they are done. Stay tuned. I'm not supposed to mix this because it can break the gnocchi. Mine are definitely sticking together. Let's mix it just a little, maybe. Make them separate a tad. Definitely not staying separated, growing right back together. Oh, you've already got some floating. There we go. All right, the moment of truth. They look like, if I said to you, I have this great recipe, it is cauliflower gnocchi, you'll never know it isn't the real thing, which is to say kind of ugly and not like what I expect them to look like. They are not pillowy. They are not as dense as potato gnocchi. They are slightly slimy and definitely chewy. Now that I've tasted them in their naked state, I'm gonna add the arrabbiata onto them. I did the Rayo's arrabbiata. Okay, it's definitely better with sauce. So mine might not be like butter and sage ricotta gnocchi. Mine are tomato sauce ricotta gnocchi. I'm not mad at it. I'm not like blown away, but considering how terribly it was going on that cutting board, I definitely thought it was gonna be worse. I have come to the conclusion that Italians get different ricotta because I literally don't think that I could have drained my ricotta long enough to make it look anything close to what hers looked like. And given the fact that she says that this is a 15 minute dish, uh, okay, no, I don't think so. 
It's decent. I wouldn't serve it to other people because it's ugly. I'll serve it to my husband because whatever. Who's he gonna talk to about my food? That's what husbands are for. But I don't think I will use this recipe again. Not because there's anything wrong with the recipe. I just don't think that the ingredients that I have access to will yield the same results as her recipe. The one thing that is wrong with her recipe is that the conversions between grams and cups are not what Siri says they are. And I'm more inclined to believe Siri in this scenario. It might taste better with some grated Parmesan cheese on top of it too, but I would rather chew glass than grate any more Parmesan cheese. So let's talk numbers. Recipes from Italy.com claims that this is a 15 minute prep, like five minute cook time recipe. I spent more than 15 minutes grating cheese. This took me one hour and 28 minutes and 40 seconds from start to finish. So yeah, it's also 4.05 p.m. right now and it is the first time that I'm eating today. So you'd think that I'd be like extra excited by it. You'd think that if anything, I'd be like more inclined to love it, but I'm also a when I'm hungry. So maybe that makes me judgier. But I don't know that it's worth an hour and 28 minutes is what I'm saying here. Price, not bad. The ingredients cost $32.92. That is including the Rayo's sauce, which is $8.69 all on its own. So without that, the ingredients are only $24.23, but this is what you're getting. The equipment was $166.67. The highest ticket item being the pot behind me, which is like $65. Any pot you have will be fine. <laughs> I just like to include the price of everything because I don't like to make assumptions of what people's kitchens are stocked with. So the total price to make this without the store-bought sauce is $191.10. With the store-bought sauce, it's $199.79. Now, assuming you have all the stuff in your kitchen, all this cost is $32.92 for an unattractive, but not terrible meal. One thing I should point out obviously is I only did like not even a third of the loaf of dough. So it would have taken me more time, even more time. But if I were feeding four to six people for $32.92, that's not bad. They can get over how ugly it is. So not a total loss, not a huge win. I will try another recipe. Like I said, she was just some random recipe that I found online. I already talked about what I think the problems were for me using that recipe. I will still link it Below in case you have access to better ricotta than me. I'd love to know if you have a ricotta gnocchi recipe you've used before successfully. I'm still on the hunt for something that I can wow my dinner guests with. If you want to watch me do even worse at Italian cooking, you can click here to watch me make arancini for the very first time. But that's what this is about. Trying things that scare me, putting it on the internet for the entire world to judge me, and maybe give me really great advice and conquer just a little bit of the trepidation that I ascribe to far too many things in my life. I'm Danielle and this is Kitchen Optimist. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to stay salty.